that's the sound of money. You wanna know what sound of money is? That's it. Ching, 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 ching. Ching, 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 ching. Well, here we are at it. I've pulled apart most of this machine. The bill bezel. Simplest way to figure this out is the, the bill bezel has a plastic shroud that goes around it as a spacer. And so that is the opening size that the hole needs to be through the chain. chain. So you have this fancy plate in there, has screws, and basically this fits over it, in it, and that's how your change machine bolts through is this, this bracket. Now it has these slots up here and these down here. What those are for is some change machines have bigger openings than that and different bezels. You can slide this up and down to line it out. We have to cut this all out. We have to cut this all out. So first we'll cut this piece out, then we'll put it on the machine, then we'll cut it out again. I got my plasma cutter set up. It's a 625 Miller Spectrum Extreme. It's real portable. I've cleaned out the inside of the change machine. I've removed the board, the bill validator, the hopper, all the electrical wires in the bracket. I put the compressor outside so it's not so noisy because otherwise it drives the customers crazy. It's going to be bad enough when I start cutting with this thing. This thing is. See it fits in there, and that's how those screws fit through there. See that? And there's a the top. Then it slides up and down on these to fit the hole. Now what we gotta do is cut this change machine to match this. So you can see that difference there. Grind at the top of this to give me a good ground, and then you can see through there there's a towel out there that's all wet. Hopefully, this allows me not to burn burn the place down.
I want to I want to show you this real quick. You can kind of see I got in there. That's what it looks like compared to the other one. You see how much bigger it is. It's a little wider, but the hopper will still fit. But it is a pain to get it in there. It's in there pretty solid, so we got to put the computer board on. Got to put the hopper back in and see what happens. Once you put the bill recycler in bill recycle mode, loading mode, I should be able to load fives without change coming out. Hopefully we got the recycler in the right mode now. Yep, so we just keep doing this till we get 35 of them in there. And it's basically just rolling them up in that bottom of that uh, recycler. It's pretty cool. Now this is a hard cost for your business because these fives will never go to the bank, they never count as income. But what they do do is basically I don't have all the quarters walking out the door anymore like I was. That's what makes this bill recycler such a huge item for an unintended laundromat. Now tomorrow night, tomorrow I'll come in and cut that out. It took me forever just to get this cut out. And I'll have to put some stickers around here to kind of trim it up, kind of clean it up. It's grinded down and sanded, so I can't hurt anybody. But would I suggest somebody putting one in? I don't know. It's kind of a trick when you're doing this kind of thing. How's it going? Have a nice night. You too, thank you. Yeah, I don't know how many I loaded. See? It won't take anymore because it got to number 35 and we're in bill loading mode and it's full. There we go. And now, what we got to do is go in there and make sure it's all loaded up, take it out of the mode that it's in, and we can literally. Come out here and test it with a 20 and see what happens. All right, so here we go. The way this thing works is we're gonna put this $20 bill in. Customers see me, they think I'm crazy. Now what this thing's gonna do is give us $5 and change, and it's gonna give us three $5 bills. They're just loaded the 20, the computer checked it out. One $5 bill, two $5 bills, three five dollar bills and I got five dollars of the quarters here and that is what we call a bill breaker and the reason this is damn near ingenious is because when people come in they don't they don't need twenty dollars worth of quarters now you say what if they want more quarters well that's easy all you gotta do is put the five dollars in let's go and get five more quarter five dollars worth of quarters or they can keep the rest So that way you don't have customers that got $20 worth really of quarters that just went out the door. This way they can, if they want $10, they can get just $10. If they want $5, they can just get $5. If they want the whole 20, they just gotta keep putting the fives back in. Now that recycler in there, as it spits out these $5 bills, it has a minimum and a maximum level. So what it does is it'll generate taking these $5 bills and it'll recycle. That's why they call it a recycler. It will actually fill itself back up. 
So there'll be a set amount of $5 bills within the bottom of that bill validator the whole time. So you don't have to touch that. You just take the money out of the top. Part. Now to put that bill recycler in here, since this was an existing change machine, you do have to do some cutting. You have to do some modification. You don't have to move any of the bolts or anything, but you got to cut that outside plate and you got to cut the inner shell. There's actually a plate. That plate you see on the front in that video is actually bolted down with four bolts. And you can pull that off. And I think it's stainless steel. So for me to cut it with my plasma cutter here on location, I have to pull it apart, cut each one individually. If I had it at home on 220, I could cut right through both materials. But to make a nicer cut, I like to do it on separate. Now an angle grinder and a sawzall work just fine too. It's kind of a pain, but even a die grinder would work. But let me show you what the ins let me show you what the inside of this looks like. And there's what it looks like. Can you see down there? It tells you how many bills are in the bottom of that because the $5 bills are down here rolled up. And there's the computer compared. That's the old computer with the old bill validator system and that's the new computer. It actually has a whole setup behind it that had to be put in. Now the hoppers, still the same hoppers. So all you have to do is, if you really want to go to a recycling capability, is you have to get different bill validators that are recyclers and you got to get a different computer unless your machine is new enough then if I would have bought a newer standard change machine, that computer would have been okay. But this change machine is probably eight years old, so technology's changed that much since I bought this. And then all you gotta do is take the money out of here, just like on your standard bill validators. Just take the money out of the top. See in a few weeks here as we go on, if this thing's gonna save me quarters or if it's just gonna be a pain, I think it's gonna help a lot. Very few customers come in here and get quarters just to save them. And you're like, why do they save them? Well, I have customers that have theories that if they get $20 in quarters, take it home and put it in a jar, they won't spend it as opposed to having $20 in their pocket. So that and poker games and some other things, that's where your quarters kind of disappear to. Parking meters, if you have any parking meters around, people gotta go pay to park, that's where they disappear to. So sometimes you can't help all of it, but that'll cut out a lot of it. I, I'm thinking I'll cut out 80% of my quarter problem, so. I'm not gonna finish the other side yet. I got another couple days and I'm gonna come back in here again. I was here late the other night trying to cut through that thing because the first time you do something, it's always a pain because you don't know exactly what to expect. You don't know how it's gonna work. And then reading instructions, you know, they're, they're really clear instructions on how to do it. It's pretty well plug and play, but still it's a new thing. It takes a little while. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Now, I had somebody ask me about if I was going to build a laundromat, what would I put in for equipment? And what I would do is, this is my front door, I'm walking in. Right here, we should have two big 60 pounders in this laundromat. And then I should have four or five 40 pounders, which are these machines right here. Those are 40 pounders. See the four little baskets on there? Each of those baskets represents 10 pounds. So on Speed Queen, four of them 40, six of them 60. I would have two great big machines, then I'd have five of the 40 pounders, and then I would either do some 20 pound hard mounts, or I would do some 30 pounders. And the reason I do the 30 pounders is a lot of vendors, a lot of dealers will tell you, you want your poundage to drop down in 20 pound increments. So if you get 80 pounders, get a couple 80s, a couple 60s, some 40s. Don't get a 30 because a 30 and 40, there's not that much difference in your volume and the price isn't much different and you're really kind of wasting your money because customers may not go to it. I found the complete opposite happening. I have 30 pound machines that my customers absolutely love more than my 40 pounders because they like that $3 price point and in their opinion, that 30 pounder is real close to the same size as a 40 pounder. So if I was going to build a laundromat in a mid-sized town, 40,000, 50,000 population, even 100,000 population, what I would do is I'd have probably about 20 washers and about 20 pockets. So I would do 10 stack dryers, I'd either do 45 pound stacks, or I'd do a mixture of stacks and single pockets where you, like in my laundromat number two where I have the double stack, I have the stack and then I have the 55 pounders. I would do something like that because you want to mix it up a little bit and then the other thing I do with your dryers is raise them up off the ground, they'll use both pockets. But if I was going to build a laundromat like this laundromat, if I'm going to redo this laundromat, I would do two 60 pounders or two 80 pounders, probably two 60 pounders, the five 40 pounders, 
and that would give me seven. So to get my one island down to 10, or say I did each island, I did seven, seven, that's 14. I mean, then you could do some 20 pounders. So you do seven 20 pounders. So that's what I would do. Now, I wouldn't be afraid to use hip front loaders as long as they're gravity drain. Don't get the pump drain. Um, but they won't last as long. People tear them up. So the hard mount, if you can get them with a big enough door, and I would look for uh, the old 27 pound speed queens. They, they, they were 27 was the, the poundage. And the reason I'd get that is the door was bigger. The 20 pounders, the doors just look so small. But if you get the 27, I know that's not much different than a 30, but you're gonna pay less, and then your customers are gonna be happy to pay $2 for that machine or 250 because it's cheaper. And I would put them on the back side of your popular machines, your bigger machines. You want people when they walk into your laundromat to see the most expensive machines. You want them to hunt for the cheap machines. You don't want to just put your top loaders right in front or your cheap horizons in front, your $2 machines, whatever you're vending at $2 or $250 or $275. You don't want them right in front. You want them to look for it. But the one thing you don't want them to look for is your change machine or your soap machine. You want them to walk right in the door and bang, they see it. And I think I laid this out in another video somewhere. But I had to question a couple times, that's how I'd lay out a laundromat. And you want your laundromat built up in areas. They're gonna go from your washers, to your dryers, to your tables, out. So you wanna organize your laundromat so you don't have people bumping into each other. Just a flow issue. Because people don't necessarily notice that, but when they use your laundromat and it's easy to use, that's when they notice it. So, if I was gonna do a laundromat, that's how I would do it. That's why I said this laundromat number one is set up so badly. I have a horrible front door set up. I have a horrible back door set up. This is more of a, what I would make into a bowling alley, which is where you have washers, you have dryers on one wall, and you have folding tables in the middle. That's considered a bowling alley. And then and people ask me about equipment. What would I use? Obviously, I'm gonna say Speed Queen or Hipsh. Uh, I'm a big Alliance laundry fan. I have great luck with them. I know how to work on them. Other people like Waska mats, which is owned by Electrolux. In my area, I tried to buy some Waska mats. I even tried to get a price on them. I couldn't get the dealer to even give me a call back. I couldn't get the Dexter dealer to give me a call back. They were, I don't know, one was 100 miles away. So that's bad because if I need parts and they're 100 miles away, that ain't gonna work. And I know you can get it online and get it shipped. But if you go to build a laundromat and they're 100 miles away and something happens that you can't fix, good luck getting them to service you. And two of the laundromats in my area, one has a was one south of me has a Waska mat, and it's Electrolux now is what it's called, and it's a horrible laundromat. It was nice when they first put it in, but it broke down, they can't get parts, it's, it's a dump. The other one was a Dexter. Now Dexters are nice machines and everything, but in my area, you can't get any service. So that laundromat actually has a Speed Queen dealer service them, and they have to pose as a customer just to try to get parts because Dexter doesn't like to sell parts to another laundromat company because they want their dealers to do it, but their dealer refuses to work on them even though they sold them the equipment. So that's what you gotta look for in your area. You might have a better dealer that's Continental. Like Continental makes some great washers. Continental's dryers are actually Alliance laundry dryers if you didn't know. Alliance Laundry, which is Speed Queen, Hips, Ipso, Unimac, Primus is another name. They make machines for other companies and they put their names on them. Continental is one of them. So if you look at a Continental dryer, the reason it looks so much like a Speed Queen or a Hips is because it is. Now where that comes in handy for a laundromat owner is you can bid shop. Now bid shopping is when you take a dealer with a Hips machine and say they got Hips uh, franchise and your other dealer has a Speed Queen, they'll actually bid against each other. Even though it's the same damn company, I can usually get one to be cheaper than the other. Now, I don't bid shop. Like, I'll shop for bids, but I don't go back to the original Speed Queen guy and go, hey, here's what Hips did for me, because I, I consider that low, because this guy's willing to give me a better price, and he's a good vendor. There's no reason I won't go with them. So if you're out looking for dryers and you want to stay with Speed Queen, I would find your Hips dealer, which is going to be different than your Speed Queen, which is going to be different than your Continental dealer. And those three dryers are all the same. Just got different names on them. So it's a real neat way to get a cheaper price. And sometimes Continental will be cheaper than Hips. And then people are like, well, how is that? I don't know. I don't know how Alliance can make a company a dryer and they can sell it cheaper than the Alliance does themselves. That's how I go around getting prices for my equipment. So, just advice for you. I've got a lot of questions on that, so I wanted to throw that out there. 